Hello, everyone. Eric Chappell, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I want to welcome you all here today to our webcast, Component Roads and Super Elevation. Our main speaker today is going to be Shakri Gavini, so uh, we'll be hearing from him for most of today's presentation. But before we get into that, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our webcast series and about our, uh, our community. Um, if you're new to the series, we've been doing this on the first and third Wednesdays of the month for about a year and a half now. We've got quite a library of, uh, of recorded webcasts, um, and you can check those out by visiting the community site. I'll be showing links to that in a few minutes. But um, the reason we do this is we want to get the users of the software a little closer and a little uh, more insight into what the folks on the product team are thinking about, you know, why these features were developed, how they're, how they're intended to work, that sort of thing. And we're really fortunate today to have Shakri uh, presenting to us because he's had such a big part to do with the things that he's going to show, and that being, uh, you know, the more detailed aspects of road design, um, many of which came out in this latest release. So we're talking about super elevation, component roads, which many of you know was a, um, a preview feature for a while, but now it's been graduated to a fully supported feature. Very, very exciting release um, back in September um, that... Uh, Shakri is going to be really highlighting. So generally speaking, though, why we're here is to give you information about, about these features. Uh, we do focus on all of our civil products, not just InfraWorks, although today's webcast is going to be uh, pretty exclusive to InfraWorks. Um, our next webcast, I'm really excited about this. We've got a new presenter, and uh, he's going to be coming in and talking to us about gaming through uh, the Stingray platform and InfraWorks and basically turning your InfraWorks models into a gaming environment, which isn't just for fun. It's actually a really effective and, and great way <clears throat> to allow um, your clients to, to visualize, to experience what you're proposing for their design. So this isn't just about fun and games. It's actually about creating an experience to get your design ideas across. So Really excited about this. Definitely check it out. This is going to be two weeks from now on October 19th, same time slot, 12 to 1 Eastern, and watch all the usual channels for uh, information on how to register for that um, coming soon. Got a couple of polls that I'd like to, to run by you. The first one is, what is your current usage level with InfraWorks 360? I'm going to launch that poll. And if you wouldn't mind clicking the screen to choose your answer or interested in knowing how heavily or lightly you're using InfraWorks 360, ranging from not even having it installed up to I use it on every project. And um, you know we're in, we've been running this poll since the beginning. So this is, I don't know if you do the math, uh, this is maybe the 30th time we've done it. Uh, and we're tracking the results as we go, and we, we're definitely seeing a shift in the right direction, and that's downward in the list toward uh, I regularly use it on some projects. And we're seeing a really strong showing in that category today with 35% saying they regularly use it. Uh, tie for 23% on I've dabbled in it, and I installed it and played with it a few times. Only 3% of you don't have it installed, and 17% uh, say they use it on every project. So that's pretty exciting. Um, another poll, I'll close that one down, thanks, thanks to everyone who voted. We'd like to know what version you're using, and not so much uh, version as, as far as time goes, but uh, what license version are you using? The full version uh, of InfraWorks, the LT version that came with um, Infrastructure Design Suite, are you on a trial? Um, again, have you not even installed it yet, or uh, you're, maybe you're not sure what you have? And, uh, historically, we've seen a really strong showing for the fully licensed version, and um, that's good news also to hear that folks are getting the full capability, especially now that the full licensed version includes all of what used to be the verticals, the road design, bridge design, and drainage design. Those are all rolled into the uh, fully licensed product now. All right, thanks for everyone who voted on the polls. I'll close those down. Um, just want to let you in on a little bit of detailed information about our InfraWorks 360 community. The main hub page is located at autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 community. And from there, you can see feeds of information from the forum, the idea station, from InfraTips. Uh, there's a tab for the gallery, which the gallery has just gotten a major overhaul and lots of new capabilities. So it's not just about posting pictures and videos of your projects, but you can post live 3D models, even stereo panoramas that 
you know, you could view with your uh, VR, you know, Google Cardboard or whatever your VR device is that you have access to. Social information, blogs, uh, videos, including all the recordings from this webcast series are up on the community site and then other, other videos as well. So it's just a great central resource of information about, currently it's really focused on InfraWorks, but um, we're working on broadening this and actually fully redesigning the community site. And uh, we'll hope it, we're hoping we'll have that launched soon. So this is even gonna get better and, uh, and more broad and more um, efficient at streaming this information. I'm not sure if uh, Shakri is going to talk about anything regarding preview or labs features today, but in case we, in case our discussion takes us down that path, we just want everyone to know that uh, any anything tagged as preview or labs is no promise of, of something to occur in the future. Basically, what this means is there's no guarantee you'll see the functionality in the software until you actually see it in a fully supported version, and we want to make sure you don't make any uh, purchasing decisions based on something that might be considered preview or labs. We want to encourage you to ask lots of questions. Uh, we've got Seth on the line to answer questions. Um, he'll be, we'll be using the questions panel in your GoToWebinar interface. Unfortunately, there are, the crowd is too big to open the phone lines. We'd love to be able to do that, but it would just be mayhem as far as audio is concerned. So we encourage you to ask lots of questions, but please use the questions panel. Um, well, based on what's appropriate, we'll either answer the question in the window, or we may even say it out loud and ask Shakri to address it and um, you know, let everyone hear the answer. So lots of questions. It will make the presentation even more interesting. So with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Shakri, and he's going to talk to you about component roads and super elevation. Shakri, you have the floor. Yep, thanks, uh, Eric. And uh, two things. Uh, certainly, fortunately, we are going to talk uh, more about our uh, uh, no preview features, mostly the features that are on 2017.2 release. And the second, you know, I have, you know, there are two of my colleagues joined, actually third one joined just to listen. And uh, Seth Hall, as Eric Chappell said, that is going to help you answer Q&A. And also uh, Nick Steven, who is actively involved in this P feature since beginning, he's also online to help answer Q&A. Um, uh, if you guys have anything else, and Himanshu Goel, one of our software development managers who worked on these, uh, some of these features, is here too, listening also. So with that, uh, I don't have a lot to, uh, I don't have a lot to share in terms of PowerPoint, but I'm going to show three, you know, just to introduce, uh, just one second, uh, just to introduce what I'm going to talk so these are the things that I'm going to talk today. You know, uh, primarily I'm going to focus on the component roads and the functionality that came along with the component roads uh, is what we are going to cover. Three things. Uh, you know, component roads are there as a preview before, but we have a lot to do with the transitions, and you can actually create so many uh, conditions uh, that you wanted to get them built in the field, which weren't possible with uh, style-based design roads. Uh, as well as the previous component roads, and uh, those things we are going to cover live. And we are also going to see the super elevation, which is again a, a, a offshoot or benefit of the component roads and uh, transitions, the cost slope transitions that we uh, we achieved. We leveraged that to do the super elevations. And I'm going to touch on cross sections and quantities briefly uh, along the process. And uh, all these component based infrastructure, I'm going to walk through. Uh, many of those uh, uh, road uh, roads, uh, you know, infrastructure, uh, such as intersections and uh, you know maybe hydrology analysis, briefly touch that kind of thing. So with that, uh, uh, let me switch back to my InfraWorks, and this is a project that I'm working. My long-term goal is actually to be able to recreate some of the projects, uh, you know, uh, a newly enhanced Manchester area, you know, airport road from uh, Everett Town like uh, taking an exit directly through to the airport to cut the traffic through the local road. This is something that was done in the last five, six years, I think. Uh, I just want to rebuild the project, and I'm uh, not done yet. Uh, that's the goal that uh, with the component roads, maybe in a year time, with all those functionality and that beautifully, you know, like everything in this will be done. But for now, there is a lot that can be done. So that's the project area generally, but I'm not going to touch uh, this. Uh, ramp here and all that. I'm not going to touch that all that right now. For this webcast, I'm going to re you know create from the ground up. So 
briefly I'll go ahead and start showing how you create component roads and what's new in that to introduce. So I clicked here on the create uh, uh, you know, uh, tool set in the roads section of the road. Click on the component roads and first and foremost you are seeing uh, you know, a series of assemblies and I want to select you know, one of those uh, divided, uh, divided dual lane divided. I'm searching here and maybe my spelling is wrong. Right. So if I go to the divided dual, so one of these I'm going to take uh, just the barrier, so asphalt median, so anything. Just I pick one, sub one assembly and you can click here and start clicking. So in design, style-based design roads, you are able to change your road type and the design speeds. Uh, you know, like as you are laying out, or you can actually select arterial, highway, and collector, and so on and so forth. It automatically sets by default. Uh, you know, what type of the road and and associated speeds kind of thing. In uh, component roads, you do that. You know, you create first your road, and you can come and change your function type. You know, what type of the road here, and what speed is that. So any subsequent modifications actually it is going to pick up relevant uh, uh, standards, but for now you know uh, in the beginning you are actually going to do one standard command and keep changing that for the entire road of the property. As you saw, while I was laying it out, it indicated just like in the style based design road, it uh, gave you you know like uh, you know uh, standards based uh, curve geometry in the center. You know you can select that and you can see uh, road geometry. Uh, a tangent section here with the colorized one way and the spiral and the, and the curve on the spiral and a tangent kind of thing. So that's in a nutshell what you have, but uh, this is not much, right, in terms of component road, it's there in the preview in the past. Too. But if you right click, there is a lot of functionality changed. Can you guys see it? Is it too bad text? Yeah, we can't really read the text, okay. Chakri, so you may want to just uh, talk about what you're seeing. So, you know, these, uh, now, we reorganized actually in this uh, uh, release and uh, uh, right click menu to look at a little bit better on the roads. So starting with the top one is a show road geometry and uh, show uh, design speed and third one is a show slope elevation. And fourth checkbox is a show roadside grading. And, and uh, this structure actually collapses if you want to go into drainage. And uh, uh, the, you know, the drainage is combined here if you wanted to add a drainage network and, and so on and so forth kind of thing. And uh, so is the case with one new section we created for add bridge. So if you uh, go and select on, you know, like the uh, show design speed, you will be seeing, uh, you will be seeing a carpet along the road that tells that this is where you know like what the design speed is. So the green carpet that you are seeing is to indicate the design speed, and you can write you know like you can add design speed to this particular uh, road, which is a new enhancement in uh, in uh, the recent product, and you can change the design speed along the roadway while keeping the function same. And uh, this uh, uh, bar will uh, you know suggest you uh, what the design speed is, uh, you know, like going to is how it is changing actually. So that uh, change the design speed command is uh, here on the screen. Uh, in the meanwhile, while I'm doing this, uh, Nick or others, if you can suggest how to improve on my ultra high resolution screen, uh, the text size. Uh, so, so I, I'm adding a new design speed here. Let's say here and. Uh, And uh, so this, from here onwards, actually the design speed is changed. I can change the location. I can change the station value. I can change the, you know, design speed value, uh, you know, to be, let's say that I'm going to make it as a 60 miles per hour, 60 kilometers per hour. And that's, uh, that's one uh, functionality here. So you can see that on the right click again. Uh, now if I select the show super elevation, 
it's actually going to show you know, my road is already applied because I'm in rule driven exact uh, rule driven uh, um, uh, setting. So therefore, it is actually going to apply wherever I have a a, a curve based on the standards, so which we are going to uh, talk afterwards where the standards are and all. It's going to apply the super elevation, and uh, you can see at uh, uh, you know, superlevation schematic is actually presented along the roadway. So you can see that. So this is a no N normal crown. So the next station is actually, you know, is a reverse crown. And uh, the station after is, the, uh, you know, uh, this is level crown and this is reverse crown and then you have full super. And uh, this is the end of the spiral, I assume here, because we have a spiral curve, spiral, and therefore, by default, we match transition length equal to the spiral, which you can deviate, of course, depending on the different standards. And again, uh, this is a full super zone. And how do you verify? There's a second, second, uh, you know, like method of verification. So you can select this super elevation gizmo here, and it shows up. Uh, you know, a cross section view. Right now, it's on other screen, so I'm just moving it here. So you can actually move station to station. You can see on the top super elevation and normal crown here and uh, go to the next station. This is a level crown location and this is your reverse crown location and uh, the next one is a full super crown location. So uh, so this is where you achieved uh, slopes point of your 2.3, 2.3. So I'm using a 30 miles, 30 kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour road, so therefore the super full super value is in this case is only 2.3. Um, so hence you are seeing very nominal superlevation. If it is 100 kilometers or 120 kilometers, you would see here uh, a you know six percent of whatever. So again, uh, we touch this as a uh, you know cross section viewer. So this cross section viewer is not exclusive to you know uh, superlevation only. And I'm not sure if the go to meeting is showing uh, real time or not. But on on my stream. Uh, you know, the cross-section updating is really real, uh, you know, like uh, it's uh, completely real-time actually here as I'm dragging every station is moving along. It's not incremental, uh, you know, it's just uh, where you stop. So just taking a moment, switching from super elevation what we have to the cross-section view. In the cross-section view, there are a lot of functionalities here we introduced in 17.2. You can click on you know, there are three buttons on the bottom here that change your views, what you're seeing. Right now, you are seeing a line diagram, which is probably what you want to see if you are investigating the top, cross, top layer cross slopes. But if you want to see how your cross sections are composed based on your components, you can actually click on that and you can see that. So it's only moved to uh, you know, like a component view, and you can actually see, you know, you have a depressed median here, uh, asphalt depressed median here, and lanes on the either side, and as you are going into the super elevated zones, same thing you are seeing. So that's what you are seeing it here. So that's one, and I select it again, right click, I'm turning on, off the super elevation, and I can keep it there. And uh, I can go, so you're not seeing actually roadside grading right now, right? It is only showing to the, uh, you know, uh, edge of travelway. The reason is uh, we show the roadside grading in component roads, cross sections, and quantities only if you apply fixed to slope, just like in civil 3D days. So by default, our roadways are done with a fixed width. And uh, to, sh to, to see grading in your stack, our road properties panel here, you got to right click on the you know on the right road and uh, you do you select the fourth one show roadside grading uh, button and that uh, gives you uh, you know the grading choices so i'm changing that to fixed slope and i'm changing grading limit uh, 10 meters i'm going to give just like in the past but the cut slope i'm going to change let's say 2 is to 1 rather than 3 is to 1 leaving the fill slope uh, 3 is to 1 so that I changed, and also now I can actually select my roadside grading. Uh, I can select my roadside grading. Why am I not seeing it? Grading, fixed slope, material. So I'm going to use a grass material on that. 
so you don't have to see that ugly aerial map drape towards your and you can see the roadside grading here on um, you know like on the side now uh, you know so I can select the, that particular grading area I can keep changing some of these parameters and so on and so forth so that's one change so before getting into the core area of what I want to talk, one more thing briefly. So there is something called here quantities. You click on this, you know, on the lower right side of your stack or the, panel, the property panel. You have a circular thing. If you click on that, it actually computes for the road. I, I need to move, you know, it, it computes for the road quantities. Why didn't it do? So click on this play button looking thingy and it gave me that for this road that I created 9673 cubic meters cut and uh, you know whatever 2.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4 so 23,400 uh, fill you know, obviously this is a small area therefore we can't fit the large numbers and therefore you know we are changing the numerical things so so there is another thing that I want to talk about this so if you click here, you see more buttons here, explore them, right? So you can actually, the first one is you can see the detailed values. When you see that, you know, it is going to give you, you know, like a little more, you know, uh, elaborated, uh, you know, just a view of the numbers. And the second one, if you do, it's actually generating, it's going to generate a report. So this, I can create it as a CSV file and I can say, uh, save that and that will be saved you know, to my uh, chest uh, in my desktop, I think it's saved. And let me see what file it uh, saved to so that I can, so MHT airport, so model name and uh, desktop. I'm gonna go to my desktop. So I'm selecting MHT, MHT. Oh, Doing it in my documents. Documents. The MHT. Yep. So it did store it in my documents, and uh, I just brought it in here. So this is the report. So formatting is not as you would expect to see it in Civil 3D at the moment for stations, but uh, the values are very similar. You know, like it's giving it a 20 meter interval cut cut areas and fill fill areas and net cumulative cut and so on and so forth. So that's briefly, you know, like uh, uh, key uh, changes, uh, you know, at a, at a component road level. Any questions so far? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so if I go to now, thanks Seth, if I go to now, you know, come here and uh, I need to zoom out a little bit, I thought, so why am I not seeing it here? Oh yes, so this view as well as, yeah, you can see it now. So you can see uh, the roadside grading on the sides, edges now, I'm gonna go to the second one also. So, you know, as you can see, you can see that the green line represents here, uh, your, uh, you know, existing ground and your two is to one on the cut and the three is to one in the fill. So if I zoom in to, so it's, you know, obviously the text is intelligent text if it can place, uh, depending on the zoom scale, it actually gonna show. So this is on the fill, it is three is to one, on the cut it is two is to one. Uh, that's, that's your, you know, like your uh, uh, cut fills. You can also see another view which is uh, the third uh, choice, radio choice here on the right uh, in the section viewer. This is actually a view which is actually calculating your datum surface from your components and uh, those datums are compared against your existing ground to calculate uh, uh, cut uh, fills, uh, you know, like on the either side. It is gonna give a cut fill area so that you can compare the quantities that are done, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, bit between the successive stations, you can see, you know, if some of you are familiar with the average and area method, you can actually uh, calculate this manually and uh, uh, investigate the you know, accuracy of the data. So that's, that's uh, another thing here. So I'm gonna move on from this, unless 
we have some questions that I need to address. Okay, so I'm going to come to uh, this road is not useful anymore to me and I'm going to delete this, right click and uh, just hit a delete button, should go away and uh, so I deleted for a reason, I have some other things I wanted to show uh, after some time. So the next one I'm going to do is a, a uh, how do you create your own assemblies, right? You know, we, I did this road using existing assembly and if you want to, you know, like add your own assemblies, uh, I'll start with you that I, I started my, you know, my when I did my project, I actually did this road uh, using out of the box assembly which is a divided two lane with a depressed grass median and you see that the grading that I have here. So that's what I did. Uh, so I want to add you know, I want to change this. Okay, I like this, but I don't have exactly the assembly that I wanted to have. So, but I, I, what I need is I want a sidewalk on either side, and uh, at the end of the side, you know, between the sidewalk and the road, I want to add a uh, carbon gutter. So that's the workflow that I wanted, to, right? So, uh, how do I do that? You know, select the road, right click, and uh, say add component. Uh, sorry, add. Uh, so this is the button. Uh, to insert a component. So when I in, when I say that, you see that the yellow thingy that is showing up and snapping to the edges. So this is where you are going to place your component. And I'm going to select a, uh, first I want to do a sidewalk. So the sidewalk that I'm seeing is here. And I selected that. And this is where I want to put my sidewalk. And I want to do this sidewalk from start to end, let's say. So. Oops, it's refreshing and uh, I'm selecting this and it shows up a mini toolbar here and I'm saying, okay, end of the road, the start of the road. You take this to the start of the road and it refreshes and once it refreshes, I'm going to go to the next one. Do we have any lag in the, in the, my talk and the screen refresh? So I'm, I'm uh, going to the end of the road and uh, so that's, so that's, you know, like I added. So this is the process that I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to add a sidewalk here and I'm going to add a sidewalk here and I'm going to add a curb here and a curb here. So, you know, the, exactly the same process that I'm going to do. I do have, you know, same uh, done in my, you know, just, uh, you know, transition workflow kind of thing here. Uh, you know, just I did uh, most of them actually here. So uh, there is a, uh, the snapping of these things is, uh, sorry, actually I want to go to another master called, uh, uh, sorry, new assembly workflow. So and I, you, you can see here I added sidewalk and uh, carbon gutter on either side and uh, I don't have, you know, sidewalk here, right? So if I see, if I select that and right click and go to my section viewer, show section view, this one, this is, the top one is a profile view, the bottom one is a section view. You can actually see, that, uh, you know, the sidewalk is connected to the, you know, the, you know on the top back of the curb here and uh, here there is no sidewalk is connected to, the, you know, the lane. So I'm going to do here what, you know, uh, I forgot my side, you know, adding uh, carbon gutter here. So I'm going to say that insert a component and I'm saying add curbs carbon gutter. So this is the carbon gutter here and uh, I'm going to add the, to this in between the lane and the thing and I will repeat the same exercise. And uh, you would notice uh, while this is doing, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm finishing this exercise here to from the start to end. So there is a, there are some right click functionalities to these components. Uh, two of them are common. Uh, one is, you know, like splitting component and de deleting the component. But curb and gutter kind of components have a special behavior. You can flip them uh, because if you are adding 
you know, inside curve, you can actually make the gutter uh, facing towards the median or facing towards the limb. So for that's the reason why you have some of these, uh, you know, uh, some of these uh, uh, contextually, some of these components have a different behavior. So I am I am making it now. You can see actually I don't need to change the attachment point for the sidewalk. Sidewalk automatically adjusted to uh, connect to the top of the you know uh, top of the sorry this back of the curb here. So that's a, that's a back point here, and your sidewalk is attached to that. So that's what I did here. So that's uh, and now your goal is actually how do I you know like right click select this road, right click. And there is a command called uh, add. So you know, add to library. Add to library. So this command is, you can add to the library. So it's asking you, hey, what area of the cross section do you want to choose to add to the library? And uh, you click on. So this is what I, am, I want to do. So it prompts you, you know, uh, just to add, uh, you know, my you know, assembly, right? So if I call my assembly, so and click this plus button, I got that. Uh, I actually have the same name, to, you know, my assembly too. Then I'm gonna call for this exercise and uh, save it, and it's done. So that's one. You know, this is how you can actually customize your component. You can customize your component defaults. Uh, make that as three meters instead of 3.6 meters, change the slope to 2.5% 2, 2 instead of 2%, so on and so forth in a composed road. And you can save it as a as a, a, a custom assembly. And next time in your project when you want to use, you can, you can uh, use that assembly. It, there's a tricky procedure how you can use that. And that tricky position you know, like is, uh, you know, like I'm gonna share in the video here, uh, uh, sorry, in the presentation here, um, how, that can be done in few steps. Maybe you know, like while you may not understand it, when you're when you're re uh, listening to this video, you can probably see these steps and and uh, and uh, mimic that. So what you do is so step one and step two we created. I created my assembly, and then you can open the file explorer and find the model file. So this particular model called Manchester Airport two folder, go to that uh, folder wherever it is. And under the files for that model, right? So typically, it's my username, documents, auto disk, controls, models, and then go to the model mo that model dot files, and mo model dot files, and go to that particular folder as you are seeing on the screen. It is uh, you know all out of the box components are written to content styles component that are used, but custom components are done for to a folder called the custom uh, assemblies are done to custom uh, custom subfolder. Go into that custom subfolder, find out that name you gave dot ac item uh, file and uh, including the PNG file associated with that, and copy that and put it to the model where you want to you know uh, copy and and uh, and uh, you know just then open that model you can use this particular service uh, assembly so we would be investing in future of course with a better uh, approach but uh, this is it uh, for now any questions before I go to the okay so now I'm going to go to a creating uh, transitions so uh, let me go to a bus bay area of my project and uh, I, I chose this area uh, actually because uh, let me change my, uh, okay, let me go and go to the bus bay area of the project. And I want to add a bus bay here with uh, a few uh, caveats in, inside actually to show what it could not, what could not be done in the past and what can be done in uh, uh, component roads. So I'm adding, Right, uh, selecting the road, right clicking it, so remove the source super elevation, just to be, and then I'm going to add a, insert a component, and uh, so I'm going to add first a lane, so okay, lanes, there are too many lanes to select, so this is a lane component, and I want to add, you know, right before uh, right before you know like that carbon gutter I just want to separate that area 
and uh, so here is what I'm gonna you know just I'm, I want to make my transition a bit wider because I want to create it as a bus bay I can then click the second grip and change the transition length I am selecting this grip changing the transition length to 20 and while waiting so you can see that we am able to change the transition lengths both graphically and uh, and uh, you know have different transitions uh, have transition length graphically as well as uh, uh, by typing in the values and actually I can right click and I can say hey I don't want any transition on the uh, on the other side right I can simply say that and I can make it uh, not to have the transition and uh, that you know, just the transition to go away completely. And I, whenever I want, I can actually bring it back a transition. So if I'm doing that, I need to adjust, you know, like uh, a few other things here, uh, uh, you know, uh, to blend the sidewalks that we would uh, see it. Uh, so I'm going to undo this for now. So I'm actually going to add one more trans, you know, one more component here. Uh, saying that uh, you know I want to have a a asphalt median in between, right? So I let me select median. That should filter some of those things out. Uh, so that's a sloped asphalt median. Just want to separate. Uh, I want to separate your bus bay with uh, some you know other kind of thing so that the traffic in the bus bay area won't crisscross the lanes actually and you, now in this example you can see your transitions don't have to line up either so you can actually have transitions of one element overlapping with one other element as you can see here therefore your lanes are actually adjusting and uh, you know and you didn't like let's say that you wanted to uh, make little more improvement as you are into the you know, a busway assuming that the traffic is going uh, in the direction of UK and India. So, uh, so I want to add a lane here, uh, just additional lane. Just go ahead and add a new lane. So the lane component is here, and I'm going to it snaps automatically to the on the other side, and I'm adding a small lane here so that you know, like either you call it as an exit or entry. I just want to you know just smoothen it out. You can do that. So what it is doing right now, uh, you know, is going to place another lane on the left side here. So it placed only a, it snapped, if you remember actually the yellow line on the other side snapped that the intelligently found out, hey, I'm very close to that, therefore it needs to blend to that particular lane. So it blended that, and it only added the transitions on, on, the, on the one side. So that's one thing. Now, if you want to add a small sidewalk, just for the heck of it, now, like I'm, I want to do it, uh, uh, you know, a small sidewalk I want to add in between, let's say. Uh, so I want to show here, uh, actually I can show what I want to show uh, in, right in this example. So if you want to take this, you know, uh, first of all I'm going to, it is blending in because the width of this road and width of this road happen to be the same. Therefore, I have a transition out here. That's what you're seeing, the two grips. And I can choose not to have the transition out, which makes that lane to go all the way to the end, which same result actually in this example because they have no uh, different in difference in, uh, 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 you know, in the parameters. But now that I have done this, I want to stretch this lane to, uh, you know, beyond. So if you can see closely, let me escape out of it. If I zoom, uh, if the you know if things will be more clear or not. So if I click on this grip, you see there is a one circle and an arrow. On the right side they are yellow, and the left side they are you know like uh, white. So I, which what it is telling is, hey, you can take this lane either way. You can actually take this lane, extend inside, like that. Right, you see that? Okay, now let me cancel out, and 
so that you can see the interaction very clearly. So it's saying that you can either take the lane outside like this, right, along along the path. Therefore, you're uh, bus bay as a two-lanes thing, or you can actually uh, track inside. So which means you are making actually inside lane as a you know two lanes for the through traffic, and bus bay uh, remains to be a just a one way one lane bus bay actually. So that's what we call it as a track choice matching. Uh, in other words, you have a choice actually when you are adding components. Uh, there are multiple configurations that you can do, and you can actually choose the way that you want to. So that's uh, you know that is uh, exactly this uh, this example. Is uh, uh, is doing so. I want to just take it up to here. Let's say so. That's uh, that's uh, one thing that uh, you know that I would like to show. You. So now again, so you can match these things so that you can make them smoother. You know, all you need to do is your start and end points. You snap them to the previous transition so that the geometry is going to be much smoother in this kind of cases. So I'm going to undo this changes are actually, let me move to uh, next aspect that I wanted to show. So you are seeing actually, primarily you are seeing uh, mostly at the moment uh, cross-sectional, uh, sorry, uh, horizontal transitions. With the transitions are what you have been seeing yet. So I want to show this also is possible to do cross-sectional warping. And, uh, and some of the areas I would share. So I will go to an example called uh, so I'm using it as a U-turn. So U-turn area, cross-sectional warping. So let's say that you want to create a U-turn in this uh, in this area. So first of all, I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the depressed median. Uh, actually, why don't we do in a different road? Uh, because we create new assembly, right? I want to show that hey, you know, this new assembly is not a lie. It is available someplace, right? So I create as a my assembly, right? Uh, my assembly. Oh yeah, no space. I'm sorry. No space, and uh, this is my assembly two and my assembly I created in the past. So I'm using that particular my assembly, and double clicking a simple road. and uh, I'm uh, just zooming in. Same thing you could do in the other thing too, but you know. So uh, that's uh, that uh, that uh, my assembly is actually a custom assembly in a different folder. So therefore, I just use the such command. So what I'm going to do here is uh, to create a U-turn. Uh, so I'm going to split. Sorry. So I'm going to I selected this component, right clicked. And I'm saying that uh, split, so first and foremost, you can actually replace the subassembly component with something else. And I'm going to split this, uh, this uh, component here. So it made this component two pieces. And again, I'm splitting this component you know, uh, somewhere here. And I got that. So you know, for a simple procedure, there are multiple ways that I can do. I'm going to show. But one of the simple things that I can do is I'm going to change this to uh, you know, just for an example, I'm going to replace this uh, with a uh, sloped median. Uh, so asphalt slope median. That's the right one, right? So that's the asphalt slope median. Said OK. So this asphalt depressed median is actually the same, uh, same as uh, you know, like uh, uh, it's depressed again. If you see the cross section, yeah, right click on that go to section view and you can see that you know the road you know it's actually depressed into minus three percent inside minus three percent you don't want to cross the road like that right uh, so actually yeah so that I'm looking into the depressed so what I will do is first I will go and change its properties and uh, this is how you can change the you know create new new assemblies too right so I'm going to change the width is same and I'm going to change the slope to uh, you know, zero percent because you know I want to make that area as a flat area as the traffic uh, you know, takes a U-turn, and I'm leaving everything else as the same thing. The moment I make it as a zero percent, you will see that the cross sections of these things don't match. So if I go here and uh, click somewhere else so that I lose the visual noise, you know, you can see. Uh, sorry, right now 
actually these two things I think I should come here. So you can see that uh, the grass is uh, depressed at 3% whereas your asphalt is uh, uh, you know 0% and uh, you know therefore you see that there is a vertical phase difference uh, because the center of the median is not on the median median center it's uh, the plane that is that is uh, connecting at least this happened to be in this content this content can be anything you guys can design the way you want but in this example uh, the center line is actually the face that is connecting the left edge of the median to the right edge of the median the center point which is in space is a center point actually so that's where the profile point and here it is depressed how do I do that how do I fix this uh, vertical inconsistency in the geometry so what I'm going to do is I select the same technique uh, I'm going to select this uh, uh, asphalt median right click and I'm going to say split right small section that I want to warp what I want to do is I want to warp my actually I want to warp my hmm, uh, let's say that I want to warp my grass median so that you know at the edge it is going to blend into the zero percent right and now I, I made a small piece and and I'm going to go and uh, actually I don't need to do that these are the two same type um, you can do it this way too. Uh, you can actually change that to zero percent and then uh, transition this to this. We'll do that. Uh, or yeah, okay. because I started that, let me do that. Uh, this is a long way, guys. There is a short way I could have done. Um, let me do that. And then I select this sub component, right click, and say transition out, transition out. So the moment I say transition out here. So these two things are blending. So these, uh, you know, the cross-sectionally, they are actually, you know, this blends. This face warps into this face. And these two faces are anyway, uh, uh, you know, like 0% and 0% they connect. Now you don't see that vertical uh, kink. So we are also doing cross-sectional warping this way. And uh, I could have actually done in a different way. So I could delete this component and uh, select this component right and uh, select this component uh, take this I think there is a snap button you see that snap button the moment I snap it snapped and it blends to that uh, thing and you lose your uh, uh, cross-sectional you know, inconsistency in the model this is very clear very nice in civil 3d and other places all these things you may have to do by matching the feature lines, extracting them, design their uh, cross slopes or profiles, and you match those, you know, target them, and they so on and so forth. Here we are getting into more intuition, uh, you know, intuition-based uh, approaches, and of course, at some point we would be giving you, you know, uh, more control on the way that you want to do. Uh, but uh, by default, we want to give you what is ought to happen and uh, therefore you don't need to make so many edits later actually so that's one goal so that's a cross-section warping and uh, and there are many other examples that I can show in the cross-section warping uh, here uh, so if I go into my master you know uh, simple things you know you can see I have an example here any questions so far? Chakra, we've got a lot of questions in the questions pane, but Seth has been uh, has been knocking those down quite effectively. So I think we're uh, we're pretty well caught up. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So the next one that I want to show is actually we talked about the U-turn. And uh, you know, we did splitting and uh, changing the slopes, all that. And uh, uh, most important thing that I want to talk about is the intersections. Uh, let me go to the uh, you know cross sections or intersection workflow here. So this is uh, engineering views. Sorry, uh, intersections. So I went into the intersection workflows and going into my bookmark saying that, uh, so basically the supervision view, this is the road that I have here. And you can see that here I did 
so some change that I did here is that uh, in this example I have a two meter wide depressed median and we changed it to three four meters depressed median as it is approaching the intersection here and uh, and uh, uh, this is not a new functionality it is there uh, before too but I just want to emphasize in in, uh, in component roads uh, we do support the turn lanes right now so first and foremost uh, I want to touch uh, based on you know I, I'm selecting here right clicking and going into the section view uh, so the sh section view so you can see that you know the views are uh, supported in the intersection area also only thing in the intersection area you can see the warping happens in this example on the left side so the moment you head into the intersection area you are seeing more grade breaks that's because we actually get uh, based on we actually get based on the you know you know you see that you know uh, based on the top surface because the direction with which your components are applied are not perpendicular to your baseline here uh, it is in fact on the T junction in this example the the component is applied radial to the curb written alignment and therefore you know you would see uh, a warped surface beyond the edge of travel way of the second lane actually so these are the two lanes and it's actually in the second lane it is it is warping that's why so you, it is still showing you you know as it is uh, based on the DTM you can see those great break points on this so that's one I want to touch on and uh, one limitation that we have is we are not showing that you know datum surfaces and quantities at the moment in 2000 uh, uh, you know like uh, 17.2 release uh, in, in the intersection area that's something that uh, is to can, is, is I need to I want to raise a limitation on that so that's one and uh, then I'm going to show you here you know the functionality that existed for design based style roads uh, is uh, is the center turn lanes kind of thing and many other functionality you have uh, is still applied in uh, in uh, um, component roads also in this case what I selected did is I selected an intersection then again selected in this uh, uh, this particular area of the intersection uh, it highlights that part that zone uh, of the median area in the intersection so I'm actually dragging that grip so you can see so it actually creates a a center turn lane so that gizmo is actually to enable the users to create the center turn lane and the center turn lane came so for example you didn't like this configuration hey I want this uh, for whatever reason uh, but then you know what I don't want this to be left turn lane now this is a bad example um, uh, for what I'm going to show because I have a median here uh, but so let's say that I selected this you want to make you don't want you want this side road to be uh, only taking the traffic from coming from north into west going east wide and going towards south you don't want uh, which means you don't want actually the median to be broken let's say in this example right um, so you can you can do this traffic turn as a straight which means you 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 said don't turn the left and at the same time you know select this turn and say that hey I don't want any left turn traffic here because uh, this is this is a restricted road in uh, in one point of a right so I'm going to make only right so the moment I do that see the median actually gets connected and uh, your turns actually your function of the road decided uh, how your components react and uh, and the junction geometry gets cleaned based on what you're doing this is very important for us because if you want to take this information into traffic analytics we want to keep our model inconsistent with the functional analysis that you do for the traffic simulation so that's uh, another thing that I want to talk to you about any questions as we are coming to end of our discussion so I hear one question or one comment in the in the uh, discussion area uh, what are we doing with this product right is this uh, you know are you guys trying to replace civil 3d uh, with this functionality certainly certainly not uh, our goal here is actually to be able to engineer as much as possible uh, rule driven engineering and engineering as much as possible with uh, a lot of uh, uh, modeling experience point of view in infraworks and uh, you know you can see you know, uh, and do a detailed uh, uh, editing so, uh, that uh, you know involves a lot of line work and uh, 
predetermined line work and for example that you have you know an uh, existing edge of you know like uh, uh, something here that you want to tie your roadway and uh, uh, and you want to change a specific section here you want to go to cross section and change the slopes uh, because you are trying to put uh, let's say a manhole here and because you are putting a manhole here and you want to change the road slope uh, so or, or rather your edge of uh, you know flow line uh, profile here uh, different from you know basically you want to make your your profile generally rising uh, let's say going down in this direction right but because you are putting a manhole here for two feet on this side of the manhole you want to make uh, your slope of the pavement go to the, to the right side let's say so those are very fine and minute changes that you wanted to the geometry. Those kind of things we are not uh, targeting in in uh, in InfoWorks. Those things you need a lot of line work to be done on the on on uh, various aspects of your roadway. So uh, things like that, one-off changes that require a lot of uh, 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 CAD work to be done in the environment, and those are you know not necessarily rule-driven. So those kind of things uh, cannot be done anyway in this system. So we, you know our goal is not. To replace. Therefore, Civil 3D will have its own, you know, like uh, 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 role in the whole bigger thing. And what we want to do is the amount of time you are spending in Civil 3D to create all those line work. We want to reduce as much as possible with the rule-driven approach in this and take the model into Civil 3D and add those one-off changes or many other changes that you would want to do, not only for the road, but anything that is coming around, you know, the parcels, maybe there are many other things that are coming into uh, focus that uh, we are not talking. So those things can, uh, should, and will be done still in Civil 3D. So more important for us is therefore that we need to talk to these two softwares together. So take as much intelligence as possible from InfraWorks into Civil 3D. That's the goal we want to do. Chucker, we saw a lot of um, questions and comments about additional functionality. I think people are excited about what they're seeing and they want to see it do even more. I just want to encourage everyone on, on the webcast to, if you have ideas about how you'd like to see even more done here, go to our ideas page for InfraWorks 360. If, if you just go to Google and type in InfraWorks ideas, it'll take you to the uh, ideas page. And there you can post you know, these ideas and have them visible to the community where the community can vote on them and you can build support for them. And uh, you know, the more community support we see for these ideas, the more likely they are to be implemented in the software. So that's a great place to um, to share these these great ideas that you all are coming up with just within this past hour. So please, I encourage you all to do that. I think... Uh, yes, that's correct, actually. Chakra, I think we're just about coming to the, the top of the hour. I've, I'm showing about two minutes, so I'm going to take back control of the screen, if that's okay with you. Sure, yeah. Thank you, uh, Eric. And I just want to remind everyone... One second here get everything in order. I just want to uh, to remind everyone that we have another webcast coming up in two weeks and just want to make sure you uh, are watching the different community channels for information on signing up for that. I think it's going to be really interesting uh, to see the Stingray technology and InfraWorks 360 come together and see some of the fun and, and useful stuff you can do with uh, with this platform. So with that, I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. I want to thank Chakri, uh, thank you for doing such a great presentation. This is definitely, based on all the questions and comments, this is something that people are very interested in and, and working with right now. Um, I know personally I was really excited to see Component Roads graduate uh, with this release and you know, super elevation introduced and cross sections introduced. This is just a really exciting release from an engineering design standpoint. And I thought you did a great job of um, showing everyone how it works. Thanks to everyone who, uh, who attended the webcast. Thanks to Seth for uh, very effectively knocking down lots and lots of questions. Nick also. And uh, we hope to see you guys again in two weeks for our next webcast and for every webcast after that because uh, as far as we know, this series is going to continue into the foreseeable future. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.